Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and thanks for coming back for another educational video. I see this question asked pretty much every day either on Facebook or in email or on YouTube is why would you have more than one store? Should I have more than one store? So let's go over the reasons why this is done and it may apply to your business. So, um, having more than one store can be a wise business decision but you've got to think through some things and do some math so we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, back in the early days of eBay people had two accounts usually one for buying and one for selling because what happened was sometimes sellers would buy things to resell and didn't want those transactions showing up in their feedback on their seller account which um, I never bought into that because even back in the early days who's gonna sit there and go through your feedback who's gonna care if you bought something to resell but people were concerned about that so that's one of the reasons this started um, was you know they didn't want to be found out that they were buying things online on on eBay and then reselling but eBay is so large now that's not really necessary anymore. You really don't have to worry about people stalking your feedback. At least I, I just don't think that goes on as much as it's hyped about on online. And also you can set your feedback to private so um, nobody can see what you're buying anyway. So a lot of measures have been taken over time to make buyers feel more comfortable and protect their privacy no matter what they're buying. Private listings in the beginning were for things like adult products, undergarments, um, that kind of thing, but now you can set your feedback to private for anything so uh, people are more comfortable buying on eBay. So number one, the first reason you might want to have more than one store is for a backup in case your main store is limited. Now along with eBay evolving over the years we've got our selling standards that we have to meet in order to continue to sell and it's things like uh, your defect rate, uh, canceling a transaction that you can't ship, um, cases closed without seller resolution meaning uh, buyer contacts you about a problem you don't solve it um, late shipment rate all these kind of things that are um, calculated to create percentages if you don't meet the minimum standards then your account can be limited all of this is on your seller dashboard you can look this up anytime you want to see where you are on your metrics but um, so this is something that came up a few years ago when eBay changed how they rate sellers and they look at their overall metrics. So you can be, uh, it's not suspended, it's restricted if you don't meet the standards. Now when eBay implemented this back in 2004, the day it happened, I got restricted because I've got I've got a whole video about this that you can go watch if you want to hear the whole story but um, just in a nutshell I was heavily focused on Amazon at the time I was doing coaching I was doing a lot of other things and uh, my eBay account was not my main focus and I had a couple of I think it was three funky transactions where it was just weird things that happened and I got negative feedback and just the metrics worked out so that I was on limited status and my account was limited I was below standard I was in the red zone and I could only list 88 items for about three months so this is when I learned that anything can happen to anybody and you've got to be prepared because uh, life happens. Um, at the time I also uh, I got sick and I had to have a blood transfusion and just there was just everything going on in my life and my eBay store was not my priority. So um, at that point I decided to open a second account to have a backup. 
Um, and again, this is not referring to suspensions when you are violating an eBay policy. Um, extra accounts are not going to help you in that situation. If you're selling handbags and you don't know they're fake and you get suspended for that or you are violating eBay policies using stock photos or uh, without permission, things like that. Um, because if you're if you're violating policies, then eBay is going to suspend all of your accounts. So um, this video is not for people who have been suspended, but if you should get on limited status below standard, where you are limited in what you can do, then it's very handy to have a second store to to focus on so you can continue to make money. Um, whoops, going the wrong way. So. When your account is limited, you can only list a limited number of items for however long it takes to get your metrics back up. eBay doesn't say, we're putting you on limited status for two months. They say your account is limited until you bring your percentages back up and you are performing as the kind of seller we want on our site. So this limited or below standard can last as long as it lasts and if you don't fix it then you will be suspended. So that's what this video is about um, how to recover from below standard. If you're already there and you are in the red zone and you can only list a certain number of items there are strategies to get your account back so go watch that video. So a second store can be a great backup if your main store is limited. And I can't stress enough that life happens. Be prepared. There are people out there that are going to say, oh, I would never, I've never gotten a negative and I've been on eBay for 10 years. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. And it often has nothing to do with you as a seller. You'll get a buyer who has a knee-jerk reaction to something or, um, you know, just leaves you a negative that was unwarranted or five major things happen in your life and you know you've got to move and you've got a sick family member or you get sick or you become disabled and when those major life events happen eBay is not your primary concern I mean it's survival it's financial stuff it's health and that's one reason I'm doing this video is because I get so many people um, coming to me for help because they're in trouble because something happened in their life that was beyond their control and they had to just put everything on hold including their eBay store and things happened. So um, if you are looking to do eBay as a business for an indefinite amount of time into the future, if you're heading into retirement and you're setting up an eBay business, I strongly suggest that you open a second store or have a second account, maybe one in your name and one in your spouse's name, um, so that you can build these two simultaneously. Um, or if you already have one, you can start building the second one just to have something in place in case something happens. Because it's it's a shocker when you get that um, notice from eBay that your account has been limited and you can't list anything. It's like whatever you have there listed already is is all you can have listed and you've just you've got to roll with it. There's nothing you can do. So enough about that. Okay the second reason is it helps manage the risk of your business. Having a second store balances the risk so that all your eggs aren't in one basket. So this is just um, like diversifying a financial portfolio goes along with the first reason. Um, it just makes good business sense to balance the risk and especially if you are going to depend on eBay as your full-time income. Those of you who are planning to quit your jobs or you, you're on a six-month plan to leave your job and do eBay full-time and you're trying to build that up, I uh, definitely suggest that you start a second store. Again, it's it's wise to have um, one in your name and if you have a spouse or a partner or you know whatever, um, another person that you trust that you could have a store in their name um, just to balance that risk. I did not have that situation. Um, I have 
two stores and my daughter has her store so I've encouraged her to open a second store as well just in case but um, it just balances that risk out so that um, your business is safe if something happens and this is just something as an entrepreneur that you want to think about. So number three is it could mean lower fees overall as your business grows. Um, I tried to do some examples for you, but there's just too many variables for me to even try. Um, and what I'm talking about here is having two or more basic stores may come out better financially than upgrading to that premium store. And if you look at the numbers here, the monthly subscription for a basic store is $24.95, or if you pay for a year all at one time, then it's $19.95. The insertion fees are 20 cents once you get that, go over your free 250, um, and then you can see the other, other fees there. Now, when you go up to the premium store, the monthly subscription is $74.95 or $59.95 if you pay for a year at a time. Um, I'm not a big fan of paying the year subscription just because it's such a big chunk and you may not want it for a year. Um, eBay changes all the time and you know we've just come through the seller uh, spring 2018 update there's changes and I just have learned being on eBay this is um, now my 15th year I've been selling since 2003 I don't like to commit to things for a year because things can change and then you've paid that money and you're just out that money so that's a lot of money to an entrepreneur to to come up with um, these year yearly subscriptions so I just pay by the month um, but anyway you've got to do the math to figure out what your fees are going to be because the final value fees vary by category so you've got to do the math yourself you know how many listings do you have what category are they in how are you paying your monthly subscription all of that kind of stuff to figure out which way works better for you but it may work out better for you to have um, two or more basic stores rather than going for the premium and this is one reason I do it also instead of having one one big store um, even if I didn't have a, a teaching store as I call it um, because I'm never going to have a, a thousand listings. I don't want a thousand listings. That's just too much for me to maintain. That's just my business model. So by having two basic stores, it comes out cheaper for me than going for that premium store. So this is this chart is on eBay. Um, just look up eBay store fees and you'll find this chart with all the information and you've just got to sit down and work the numbers for your individual unique business because everybody's different. We all sell things in different categories. Um, we have different numbers of, of items for sale. It goes up and down during the year. You know your business better than anybody. So this may be a way to bring down your fees by having two basic two or more basic stores rather than upgrading to that premium store so you're just gonna have to run the numbers and see how that works for you okay number four you may want separate stores to separate uh, your businesses for accounting purposes if you have different product lines, you may want to have different stores. Now here I'm talking to people who have maybe a brick and mortar or a website and on one website they're selling auto parts and on another website they're selling um, sporting goods and then on another website they're selling beauty products and they have very different specific product lines that they want to separate the income streams and expenses for accounting purposes. So they could say, oh, well, this year it looks like our health and beauty store is not doing well. We, we're going to shut that one down. Um, so I'm not talking to thrifters on this one. Um, most people do not have multiple stores uh, for this reason. From a customer standpoint, 
sellers don't need multiple stores so if you're like me and you're a thrifter and go to garage sales and just kind of sell all sorts of different things whatever you can find you don't need multiple stores for this reason to divide your inventory by type because um, eBay is a giant garage sale and buyers are not necessarily loyal to specific sellers so if, if you normally sell uh, sweaters or handbags or shoes um, that are thrifted and you've got you know a mix in with a whole bunch of different other kind of things odds are buyers aren't going to come back to you after they buy one thing and reshop your store they're just not um, if you're like my friend Tino the sole advisor go check out his channel he knows all about shoes um, he may have repeat customers because that's all he does pretty much is shoes. I think 90% of his store is shoes. So he may get the repeat business because he's very focused on one type of product even though it's thrifted and bought used. He has a very well-defined niche but I know most of you don't and that's okay. You don't you don't need to go that direction. Um, but buyers generally buy based on search results on eBay. Oh let's see I'm going on a ski trip. I need a new jacket or a new uh, hat or gloves or whatever I'm gonna jump on eBay and I'm gonna do a search for wool uh, ski hat beanie purple and I'm gonna look through the results and I'm gonna get the one I want whether it's based on price or brand or whatever um, but that's how buyers normally buy on eBay they don't normally go back to the same seller unless they have a unique or consumable product that buyers will return to purchase. So if you are selling coins or stamps, um, you probably have some repeat customers. You're selling to other coin or stamp collectors. Um, or if you make a uh, health and beauty product or if you sell all um, hair salon products that you get on closeout, you may get some repeat business because that's a consumable item that people are going to come back to uh, refill once they've used up whatever it is that the item you know the shampoo or whatever so speaking to the average reseller who is a picker multiple stores are not needed to separate your types of products um, it's eBay just doesn't work that way it's not like the mall where you've got um, you know you go to a shoe store and then you go to the uh, Claire's accessory store to get accessories and earrings and then you go to the Clinique counter to get your makeup eBay is just everything's all mixed together when people need something they go on there and search for what they want and buy based on either priced uh, price or uh, how quickly they're gonna get it you know if it's a sense of urgency about the purchase or uh, you know like when I go buy poly mailers um, for my business I don't go back to the same one all the time. I always buy based on price. Whoever's price is best at that time. Um, same with labels and stuff like that. I buy for my business. Um, you know, I do it based on price. I'm I'm not loyal <laughs> to anybody really. Um, so, again, let me repeat that. Speaking to the average reseller, the pickers out there, you thrift store people, uh, treasure hunters, you don't need multiple stores to separate your types of products that's not a reason to do it now there's a number five reason and this is a bonus reasons because this is why one of the reasons why I personally have two stores and I wanted to address this because um, I'm not hiding anything I just want to be a regular seller like everybody else so as a mentor in the eBay community my first store Atlanta Golf Shop gets a lot of traffic who aren't buyers they have no intention of buying anything and it's because it's a teaching store and it that's by design on my part because when I entered the realm of eBay mentor in 2007 and just started writing my blog and trying to help people and share I was very passionate about being authentic and showing my store saying hey I am a real person I'm a real seller I have the same struggles as you you can go look at my store and the reason I did that was because at the time and still today there's a lot of junk on the internet about eBay and people trying to sell you um, all the stuff you don't need all these you know accessories and um, 
you know, back then the thing was ebooks. It was like you had all these people selling you these programs that were going to help you make more money on eBay. And I was very interested in that because I wanted this to be successful. So when I would see these things, I would contact the person who created it and say, wow, this sounds fantastic. I'd like to see your store so I can see what you do. And they either wouldn't reply or they would reply with some really lame reason about why they couldn't share their store. And so, you know, naive Suzanne figured out these people don't even sell on eBay. They're just peddling this information um, to make money and they you know they're, they're just trying to get me to sign up for their wholesale program to make money on my sign up they don't have any experience with eBay whatsoever so I learned that after a little while so when I stepped out to try to help other people I did not want to look like them I'm like nope here's my store you can go look at it you can ask me anything you want I'm a real person just like you and I was trying to separate myself from all the um, snake oil salesmen out there that were just trying to rip people off so uh, but putting yourself out there like that has its disadvantages which I'm willing to accept because I passionately believe in eBay and that it can be life-changing so in 2014 when I was restricted I decided it was time to open a second store not only so I would have that backup but so that I could just sell like a regular person without all of these student traffic on my account so having that second store helps me remain objective in my observations since I am on the same playing field as everyone else um, I know that my Atlanta golf shop store gets a lot of traffic that's not buyers probably some sales I wouldn't get that um, if they didn't know it was me that kind of thing so having a second store really helps me compare the two and remain objective because I can sell things just like an average regular person and my numbers are not skewed by that student traffic so that's a reason that probably most of you aren't going to have for opening a second store but I wanted to you know be real and be honest with you that's why I do it I'm not trying to hide anything I just want to be a regular seller and not have irrelevant traffic um, because I still rely on eBay for income um, but having this highly publicized store now since 2007 has put me at a little bit of a disadvantage because getting all those views without sales um, can be you know it has its disadvantages in search so I just wanted to explain that to you okay so those are the reasons that you may want to have multiple eBay stores I would love to hear from any of you that do this um, I knew a girl at <clears throat> excuse me at one time she had eight stores and I don't know that I could justify that but um, I'd love to know your feedback on this and if, if you do this, if you've been thinking about doing this, and of course, as always, if this video has helped you. Also, I do appreciate your input on what kind of videos you want. Let me put out there that um, I just don't do shipping videos as far as how to ship specific things because um, that is my least favorite part of the business <laughs> and you'll be able to tell in that video I am not excited about it but you can search for anything you want on YouTube and find out how to package it um, those are there's so many thousands of those videos um, and also I'm really not going to speak to the seller 2018 seller update simply because I just I never have you know when those updates come out I just adjust and adapt and do it and um, you know my feedback is do what eBay says follow their best practices advice and see how it works for you um, if it doesn't work move on but eBay has gone through a lot of changes in the time I've been on it um, you know they took away the seller's ability to leave negative and neutral feedback that was a huge thing and 
a lot of sellers left because they didn't like it. But you know what? You adapt and you move on, and that's just the way it is right now. Um, I used to sell all kinds of ebooks and information products on eBay as a digital download, and where you would buy it and then it would be immediately delivered by email. Um, eBay took that away. And guess what? You adapt and you move on. Um, there's been all kinds of things like that over the years that um, have changed. And sometimes eBay will change something and they don't see the results they want and then they change it back. So that happened with free shipping. Um, for a long time there was no benefit to having free shipping. And then uh, when Cassini came out I think in 2013 they said okay uh, if you offer free shipping you get higher search placement. So everybody switched over to free shipping for that. Then they took that away a couple of years ago and said, "Well, we're not going to we're not going to give you that boost anymore for free shipping." So that's when I went back to calculated shipping. So, as far as the updates concerned, um, read it, understand it. If you have questions, call eBay and ask them. Um, you know, go on eBay for Business Facebook page, ask them questions. Uh, my opinion really doesn't matter because I'm a seller like you and I'm just going to adjust to do what eBay recommends and move on. And I just feel like it's better to focus on moving forward, doing the things you can to increase your sales, grow your business, stay positive, and not getting caught up in all of these discussions about changes you don't like. So, all right, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave your comments below. Have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.